Hello and welcome to what is a presentation of what we plan to run and how we plan to operate our squad program in 2023-24, which will be our first full unrestricted season since 2018-19. So welcome to the squad. You may have put your son or daughter in our program um, and some of the benefits of being within the squad program rather than the open class is to do with physical development, mental development, overall skill development and also football is a social sport so you should get strong social development lots of areas that perhaps aren't clearly measurable um, but nevertheless important to a child's development so how we progress at APSS is very important obviously football is a sport um, but more and more now we're seeing sport tie into education in terms of development so this diagram here shows curriculum planning assessment this is effectively what your child or children should be doing every day at school yeah Schools have to plan what they're going to teach, how they're going to teach it, and then how to measure progress and success. And so this is something we're taking to underpin our sport development and to help your child to learn effectively every time they're with us. So one question you can ask yourself is, what is football? How is the game played? Well, there's effectively two main scenarios in football. You either have the ball, you're attacking, or you don't have the ball defending. And there's, actually, there's one other scenario that's not on here, which links to two, which is transition, the moment you change from in and out of possession. These uh, categories here are something that all of our coaches are aware of. Maybe they use different words, different language. This is basically what we're teaching within the squad program um, and adapting at different age levels, obviously, different levels of detail. Um, but this is effectively what the children will learn every time they come training. So the principles of play underpin everything. That's how the game is played. And then from that, we've developed our own playing philosophy. Uh, this is what it is. So this is basically our curriculum. This is again what we work on on a weekly basis when you come to squad training you notice there's only one out of possession category then there's obviously one transition category and then the rest is all to do with what we do with the ball um, older teams older players will do more defensive work but our belief with these younger age groups is to teach them what to do with the ball so good example there be creative and confident in a 1v1 that's very important to us we, we want players that, that when they have the ball at their feet they want to take somebody on um, and they, they have confidence to play the game so that's that's driving what we do a lot of what we do is with the ball and developing attacking we can worry about what we do without the ball a little bit more obviously we do teach that that is part of the game but we worry about that a little bit more as they get older and as they start to progress out of the program and onto the next part of the pathway. We've now split our SPROB program into phases of development, something we were kind of progressing on during all of the closures and, and as we reopened, and we've now got that in place. Um, so it's sort of done as a dual age band and those dual age bands can work together at times um, within their training. And of course, children may get opportunities to play up as well um, if they're progressing well. We actually do start now at U6, that what I would call actually a pre-squad as we start to just get the children together to train. Maybe go to the old tournament, just start to get their understanding of, of how the game's played. u 7 eights is the individual phase. Um, again, focusing more on what that one person is doing with the ball. Then as we get to U9-10, we start to branch out and look at well, what's the next player over here and over there doing in the small group. Then at U11-12, it's then working on the whole team and how they coordinate together. And finally, in the, the last stage at U13-14, as players are starting to exit the program, we are then looking at the competition phase and, and going to compete and starting to play 11 as side football. This is the micro, meso, macro cycle. Um, it's effectively kind of what we're doing on a daily and weekly basis, feeding into the, the term and then feeding into the whole season um, of the phase that your child is currently in. Um, this obviously could look a little bit different depending on, on how often your child is training. Um, my reason for putting this into the presentation really is just that this is what all of the professional clubs are doing now that they're thinking about how things link from a daily basis all the way through to the, the whole season in order to help progress and develop their players. Um, and that's also part of our thinking as well. Here are some examples of what I'm looking for the coaches to do within each of those phases. As you can see, obviously, at U7, U8, it's a lot more just basics of 1v1, 2v1, 2v2, keeping it very simple, just getting the players to understand what that that person on the ball is doing and then you see as we go up the phases it starts to progress to 3v3 6v6 and then yeah, the u13 14 should be playing 8v8 and above within their practices because they're getting ready for 11 aside i talked earlier about assessment being an important part of what we do which is really just observation and then feedback to players is, is the simple way uh, to conduct assessment uh, 
how we look at a squad player or, or any player within our program is we've taken the English FA's four corner model. Um, we believe that's a, that's a good way to, to break down a player in terms of their attributes. So we look at how they interact socially, um, how strong they are in terms of psychological aspects. Obviously, their athleticism and their athletic qualities are important. Obviously, one of the things that we're very good at doing is developing the technical side of their game. Um, and then something I've taken from my previous work, um, you know, how, how good is a player's game impact in terms of when they go to a match, can they influence a game, how strong are they at that? So those are the, the five areas that we observe our, our players at. I think it's important for everyone to understand that we, ha we have a clear pathway all the way from age two um, within the open class. We can go into different stages of that introductory, intermediate to advanced. And then hopefully at some point, if a child is developing well um, at one of these stages, we can then give them the chance to go and try out with the other squad players. And then hopefully we can transition them from the open classes into the squad program. Then we have our own squad pathway within that. Again, at some point, Kinder Kicks open class, uh, a child will move out of that. And then we've got the four phases there that I've just shown you on the previous slide. Um, and then something I'll come on to later, once you've reached U13, 14, then obviously the, if you stay in Hong Kong, the exit route is into the Hong Kong FA Leagues, uh, where we support two other clubs um, with their coaching uh, within those leagues and 11 aside football. So the exit routes from our program, it's very important we're thinking ahead for the children. As I just mentioned, there's the Hong Kong FA and the fairly newly formed youth Premier League teams. Um, girls as well. Uh, there's now a U15 girls league and a route into women's football through the HKFA. So if you're staying in Hong Kong, um, there's a pathway all the way up there, up to under 18s and, and then adult football that, that we can support you with. If you're leaving Hong Kong or your child's leaving Hong Kong at some point, um, we've sent some students before to residential schools within the UK. So they study their GCSEs, quite intensive training um, uh, with professional coaches as well to help with their development. Obviously above that then within higher education, uh, we've supported a few students to go to the UK and the US. A couple of our former players have gone to places like Loughborough and Bath, which are very strong football universities within England. Um, we've had a, a couple of players as well get scholarships to the US and, and use their football ability uh, to get into, into a university there and then, and then further develop. Um, and then, yeah, as I say, for the lucky few, one or two, um, a few of our players have gone on to professional clubs uh, around the UK um, and one or two other clubs in Europe. Um, incredibly difficult, but we can support on that as well if your child's at that level and has that potential and that ability. If you're not sure how the age groupings work within youth football in Hong Kong, from the start of August in 2023, this is how it will be done according to this table. It's very straightforward. It's just done by the year of birth. As you can see at the start point there, anyone born in 2018 is an under six. And we work our way all the way through the years up until 2010 born players will be under 14 boys or girls. If you're a 2009 player, then you're too old for the system. You need to move on to an HKFA team there. Any questions about how the age groups work? As I've said on other slides, please drop us an email and we can go into it in more detail. So here's a little diagram. Maybe perhaps you can go look at the PDF after the video, uh, try to break down uh, how it would work for each age group. Ideally, you're doing two sessions and they're both squad sessions. U13 to 14s is very different because you're probably in an HKFA team as well. Can be a little bit confusing there because you can play for APSS in one league and then another club in another league and that's absolutely fine and we encourage that. I think if you've got U13, 14 parents and you're not sure how that works at that age group, drop myself or APSS an email uh, so we can clarify that for you. Younger players might do an open class instead of that second squad session, depending on availability. Um, we're in ECAs at certain schools. If you want to know which schools we're in for the ECAs, I've, I've put a couple of them there. But again, you can drop us a note if you want to know which schools we're in. Um, and if that works on your schedule for an extra session, uh, we can do that. And then we run something called the matrix. Again, that's quite a lengthy explanation process as to what that is if you don't know it there's a little bit of information on the website fantastic supplementary program um, in terms of getting touches of the ball developing technique sharpness of movement and a lot of other aspects of the game um, so again if you're interested in that what is it it is a invite only program and you need to be in the squad to get that invite um, again 
drop us an email if you're interested in that program next season um, because it does supplement the squad training very very nicely and i'm a big fan of it here's our squad training timetable for next season it is obviously subject to change but you can start to plan your diaries around this and hopefully by the end of june we'll have everything confirmed for you one big change saturday other than new sixes which is a new squad we're trying to establish and grow saturdays is just for games all of the training is midweek this avoids clashes on the saturday with training and tournaments we've also put everybody's dual age band two age bands together there'll then be two senior coaches that work across that age band where there's a little bit of a clash on a monday for example with tko and sandy bay we can alternate those senior coaches moving between the squads that means the players get exposure not just to one great senior coach but two that also helps as well if we have to have a coach cover on game day um, or if the schedule has to change for some reason for illness um, we've got a senior coach there that's familiar with the players across two age bands at, at several venues so these changes we believe are going to make us a stronger club program and we're very happy that we've got this opportunity to make those changes there look out for more updates at the end of june with the schedule so what's the purpose of training well that's obviously to develop improve and prepare you for a match no matches really no point in training so the two do come hand in hand um we're a key member in the hong kong junior football league for both the boys and the girls through every age group that will be your main league you can see there there's some secondary league competitions um, for older girls they will move into the u15s um, at other clubs um, i've mentioned also the 13s and 14s boys would probably play for an hkfa team as well as they possess uh, and then in the under 10s and under 12s we play in the golden age might be some opportunities there for u9s and 11s as well you can see there on a sunday uh, throughout the season that kitchi are hosting their tournaments again at their training ground and we go and compete at those lots of friendly opportunities now um, lots of access to fields at the moment and we've got a much more streamlined program so good opportunities there for additional minutes for players um, when there aren't league matches tournaments are back up and running soccer sevens ran for the first time uh, this year since 2019 and i think we managed to get a lot of our players game opportunities there there's also something called uh, operation santa claus you can see there that a few of the age groups will go to um, and uh, the main man the boss paul smith is back organizing the tours we hope to go back to the jssl in singapore we've, we've gone there many times before had some really good experiences with many of our teams uh, and there's also different opportunities coming up for tours in thailand so paul is dealing with that um again if you want to know more information about these these wonderful development opportunities overseas as well on top of the main games uh drop us an email and we'll give you more information there so where do apss uh, and the junior football league play matches well there's an awful lot of venues um that we use that are through the lcsd probably too many to list on this map um without going into too much detail and wasting more time in terms of a lot of the private venues we go to hong kong dragons host games out in dong chong hks obviously is the tai tam field down in tai tam stanley ho is one field where we might host friendly games for you at times and then uh we get access to chung kwan for the hong kong fa for certain matches straight away there you can see these four venues very spread out across hong kong there is on a saturday when you go to a game potentially a large amount of travel involved more central for everybody australian school kg5 kellett and kcc host matches and tournaments for certain groups uh, and then it's only a five a side pitch but we've now got access to the korean international school so some of the younger age groups might get access to that field um will be u8s and below in terms of getting to the games i know sometimes there's a lot going on and some parents are very good very good at communicating we're coming from this event that event we might be you know a few minutes late from the meet time but if we're going to prepare warm up get ready and do our jobs on the day 30 minutes before kickoff time is when we need everybody at the field so now i just want to look at some of our game day expectations um in terms of the result right because we're going to go play a game of football and at the end there's going to be either a winner a loser or it's going to be a draw trying hard and trying to win are important 
we want to instill a winning mentality and strive to be the best. Obviously, you know, everyone should be trying to go to a game initially trying to win it. However, winning at all costs is not worth the cost. At APSS, we'd rather produce good people over good players, for example. Eh? How we conduct ourselves, um, how we deal with the opposition, the referee, all that stuff is, is far more important. We're not interested in cheating uh, to get a result or gamesmanship. These things do not interest us. And we have to handle victory and defeat. We have to win with dignity and we have to lose you know, with pride and, and try our best and work hard. Nobody's going to win every single game of football. So you need to trust in the process, okay? The actual result of the game is one way we can measure success and progress in our players. But I've already talked a lot about the philosophy and how we look at a player. Those are other ways we can measure their development. How effective were we at applying our philosophy points and the principles of play? For example, we look to play out from the back. That is very high risk at under seven, under eight, under nine, as the children are still developing their techniques and understanding. And I'll tell you now, it's going to cost um, some of our younger team's goals. But we stick with our philosophy in the process. We don't just kick the ball long uh, to get rid of it and then try and rely on maybe one player's athletic strengths to score. We try and teach the children to pass the ball out from the back, keep the ball, dribble the ball out, make good decisions. And eventually, you'll see it further down the line, under 13, 14, those players will be extremely successful. But initially, it can come at a cost. Sometimes the result masks the truth. Sometimes you dominate possession. Again, you get caught on the counter-attack. You just you fail to take your chances. And ultimately, uh, did we play the APS away? Are we working hard? Are we a team? Yeah, are we cooperating? Those also are important aspects of the process and our development. Important just to raise now that there are codes of conduct in place. Our own program has a code of conduct uh, to guide behavior for the coaches as well as the children and the parents. That's online there. I won't go into detail on that now. The Junior Football League that we compete in also has a code of conduct, which is very similar uh, in terms of guiding behavior. Um, the league has also developed something called a parent care guide, um, which if you're on the PDF, you can click on the link to the Junior Football League website to read that in your own time. Um, and as I just mentioned, I want to reinforce now, we are supporting the development of good people um, over good players. Your points of contact. Hopefully you all know that it's squads at AP Soccer for a general squad email. Um, where you can speak to your coach at the field. Some of you may have contact with your coaches. Stuff won't get dealt with uh that way effectively stuff needs to come into the office so if you've got a training query about registering for a training on a certain day or you know an issue with the weather get in touch with admin at ap soccer for that um or if you're a sandy bay stanley ho sports center player you can contact cse they deal with all of the registrations um for the program there for us the game day coach, yeah, your, your main coach comes into play at the weekend when there is a game. They can be contacted via WhatsApp or telephone if you've got an issue maybe with illness on Friday night um, or in the morning. Or, yeah, if you are, something's happened and you're running late, just drop them a WhatsApp uh, just to let them know you'll be there soon. That's always appreciated. Um, and, yeah, there's a lot of information in this presentation um, because I did want to share as much as possible. Um, but there are some areas where there is more detail that we can go into. Um, you can drop me a note anytime at Dave at AP Soccer with any sort of comments or feedback. Um, they're always welcome. Or if you're more familiar, Kowloon side, and you know Tom, you're more comfortable reaching out to him. Same email, but Tom at AP Soccer. You can get in touch with him as well. This slide just obviously raises awareness of the fact that we still take care of our coaches' continuous professional development. We have a lot of resources online in our Google Drive, academy soccer coach where we do our planning we do internal cpd and we do a lot of external cpd and we're still sending our coaches over to the uk to various fa's for them to get accredited to ensure that they're at the correct level or above uh, in order to successfully work with your child or children we've got some good bits online we've got a facebook page we normally post little pictures of the squad on there after games and tournaments you can go on there and like and obviously see see images of your children um just as a team shot there we're also on instagram where we post materials there um and then something that i've kind of taken a direct interest in is trying to develop our youtube channel uh in order to support player development away from the field um so there's stuff on there if you go to the playlist for the squads there's videos relevant to the squads 
There's a playlist called Individual Skills and Techniques, and there's a ton of videos in there that young players can watch, and then you can go out and practice the skills and tricks on your own. And then off the back of that, I developed something more advanced called The Diamond, um, which again, actually you can design your own ones, but there's tons of examples in there you can watch quickly uh, and then go out with a ball and try and practice those skills and replicate them. So I'll end with a quick quote from the great man himself, Lionel Messi. Improvement is the name of the game. Thank you. If anyone sat through the whole of that, well done. Uh, hopefully there's some useful information there for you to take it into next season with us. We'll hopefully be one of our finest seasons ever. Thank you.